Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating particle advection in Cinema 4D and X particles. This lesson was brought to you by the new X Particles Animated Condensation Rig, available now on cgshortcuts.com. If you've got X Particles and Cinema 4D, all you need to do is apply the rig to any object for instant animated condensation. It's also set up to render perfectly in Redshift, which should save you even more time. You can check that out at the link below. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So the first thing we're going to need to create this effect is an interesting shape we can emit our particles from. So let's bring in our trusty old torus object, which is pretty large by default. So let's reduce the ring radius and the pipe radius. So this guy is a bit smaller in our scene. And we're going to emit smoke from this to drive our particles and give it some nice fluid organic motion. So let's head over to the Insidium menu and under X particles, we'll add an XP system. Then to have smoke emitted from our torus, we need to right click on that. And under Insidium tags, the fire and smoke system in X particles is called XP Explosure. So we'll make this an Explosure FX source. And now that we've got that tagged, we'll need to add an XP Explosure to our system here. So we'll grab the Dynamics folder and add a new Dynamics object, which you probably guessed needs to be an XP Explosure FX which gives us this big old box in which our simulation can take place within. So let's hit play and see what happens. We've got our fire and smoke emitted from the torus, which is good, but we've also got some particles shooting off back here. So let's rewind this and make some adjustments. We'll start by disabling the particle emitter that comes with our XP system for now. Then we'll take a look at the tag we added to the torus. We only wanna generate a cloud of smoke from this, so we can remove the fire by turning the heat and fuel off. And we'll also bring the smoke all the way up to 100%. Then in our XP Explosure effects, under the Solver tab, we're going to make quite a big puff of smoke. So I'll increase the size of our Solver box as well. And over in Display, let's set this to Smoke so we can see our smoke in action. And we'll see what that gives us. And at the moment, that smoke is being pulled down by gravity, which looks cool, but we want it to push outward in every direction from our torus. So let's rewind this and we'll go and make some tweaks under the simulation tab. Let's slow the simulation down a bit by decreasing the speed to 90%. Then we'll reduce the gravity so that it's not being pulled straight down. And we also want the smoke to rise. So let's get rid of the buoyancy as well. Okay. Now we're starting to get a puff of smoke pushing out in every direction. So let's refine this further. We'll get rid of those smaller details in the smoke by reducing the vorticity. And we'll get some more interesting movement by increasing the two turbulence settings here. Okay, that's looking a bit more interesting. Another thing I like to do back in the tag, let's increase the curl value to make our smoke twist and curl as it grows out from our torus. And to increase the effect of that, we'll also bring up the pressure value. And now we should get a nice fast puff of smoke with some interesting looking curls and turbulence, like so. And finally, I don't want the smoke to keep emitting the entire length of our scene. We just want a single puff of smoke and we can achieve exactly that by keyframing the smoke value here. So at frame zero, let's set a keyframe at 100% smoke. Then after one second or 24 frames, let's set another keyframe at 100%. But the very next frame will turn the emission off completely and keyframe that. And now we get something like this. So that's the simulation all sorted. We now wanna use this smoke to drive some particles. So let's rewind this and we can hide the exposure effects for now and show our emitter again. Then down under the object tab, let's change the emitter shape to a circle. And we'll also reduce the size of that circle to 40 centimeters. So it's a bit closer to the width of our torus. And I'll also change the direction to positive Y. So the emitter is pointing upward. Then over in the emission tab, let's make sure the emission is set to rate and we'll increase the amount of particles emitted by raising the birth rate to 5,000. Let's see what that gives us. A nice steady stream of particles going straight up. Okay, because we're going to drive these particles with the smoke, we can drop the speed down to zero because it's going to get that value from the smoke advection. But we will allow a bit of variation in here. We'll also head over to the Extended Data tab 
and enable rotation, which will make random. And now if we hit play, those particles are staying put. So let's drive our animation with our explosion effects down under the advection tab. We'll enable that. And we're going to drop all of these inputs except the velocity, which is basically the speed values of our smoke. And as easy as that, those particles are now adopting the velocity values of our smoke simulation. And you can see if we show the smoke again, those particles are traveling along in that same trajectory. And we can even slow our particles down by reducing the velocity. And now they're still traveling along with the smoke, just at half the speed. Now, if we take a quick look at our final render, you can see that all the objects we've got instanced onto our particles don't actually touch each other. So we need to find a way to prevent our particles from colliding, which is actually pretty easy to do in X particles. We just need to go to dynamics and we'll need an XP PP collisions dynamic object. And the PP stands for particle to particle. And in there, we'll get rid of the bounce and increase the friction between the particles. And if we play that back, those particles are doing their best not to collide with each other. So we'll be able to instance different objects onto them later and prevent any collisions. But before we do that, now's probably a good time to wrap all of our particles in this big bubble. And we'll do that under the generators folder where we'll add an XP open VDB mesher to the mix. And we want to mesh the area around our particles. So let's drive that with the particle emitter. We'll pop that into here which gives us a nice big blobby bubble around everything, which is kind of what we want, but I want to make sure the bubble is wrapping a bit closer to our particles. So ideally we want to be able to see what's going on inside here. So let's grab our VDB mesh and right click and add a render tag. Let's use the display tag. And in there we can enable this and set the shading mode to lines which sets the mesh to wireframe mode, allowing us to see the particles which are a bit deeper inside there. So back in our VDB mesher, we should be able to tighten that up by adjusting the point radius down here. Let's try reducing this. And now that's wrapping around a bit closer to our particles, which now looks like this. So we're just about there now. At this point, we can probably switch our particles out for objects. So back in the emitter, under display, we could switch the particles for spheres maybe, which looks like that. But we can take this one step further and instance any geometry we want in there at render time and keep things running nice and fast. So let's take a look at how to set that up in Octane. And obviously you'll need the Octane renderer plugin to follow along with this part, but you can easily do the same thing in most other renderers. And you can see I've already applied an octane specular material to our VDB mesher. So we get that bubble kind of look. And I've also thrown in a couple of octane lights and a texture environment to give us the white background. And we're going to instance some objects onto our particles at render time with octane. So we need our particle emitter to communicate with the renderer. So let's right click and add a C4D octane tag. And we'll need the octane object tag on there. And inside the tag, it's already detected that this is a particle system, which is why we get this extra particle rendering tab. And inside there, we can enable this and set it to geometry, which will allow us to instance any geometry we want onto those particles. By default, that gives us a sphere on every particle, as you can see in the render, but I wanna use the geometry sphere and the torus I brought in here instead. So we just need to grab the object tag and drag both of those in here. And now the particles are alternating between spheres and toruses. So we've pretty much completed the effect now, but if you wanna randomize the color of each object like we do in our render, we just need to add a material, maybe an octane glossy material, and apply that to our sphere and torus geometries. So not the emitter itself. Then in that material, we might just open that up in the octane node editor and get active material. Let's rename this to particles and under index, we'll increase this to make those objects a bit more reflective and we'll give those reflections a little bit of roughness as well. And now to generate random colors on each object, we'll bring in a random color node 
and connect that up to the diffuse slot here, which gives us a random grayscale value across each object. So all we need to do is colorize that by inserting an octane gradient. And we can replace the knots with some random colors to get something like this. Or we could load in a gradient preset here, like this one, for example, to give us a load more colors. So feel free to use whatever color combination you like. And that's about it for this effect. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we could make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.